Here we are again. Again, get a King James Bible just because I'm using the scriptures. In this video, I mean, I'm trying to add, remove, change, or record for posterity any part of the scriptures. Read them all for yourself. Consider this a paraphrase. Again, there's a bit of a debate going on about creation and evolution, right? And there are some even who claim to be brethren, who claimed to believe in evolution. Which, again, the fact that you have to believe in it should tell you something, right? But, you know... It's been disproven scientifically so many times that I would take a different approach here and show what evolution is in sort of a clear, easy to understand way because they always say, you know, you need to define it as we define it. No, instead, let's look at what it really is. And for all the brethren out there who are trying to mix evolution into their Christianity, it's nonsense. And I hope after this, maybe you'll think that you should let it go, right? And I have no intention of going into hours and hours of scientific evidence, right? Because you've already been told that countless times. I can refer you to countless creation scientists, countless videos that have disproven it over and over again, right? And you don't seem to be getting it. So let me use the scriptures here to show you, again, if a Hindu came up and tried to mix some doctrine into your Christianity, you would say, no, go away. If a Buddhist came up, you would say, no, go away, right? But because they have labeled it, quote-unquote, science, you're allowing them to mix their false religion of evolution with your Christianity. Not good, right? Not good. And hopefully, I'm going to go through it exactly what it is. We're going to look at it. Again, I'm not going to have to, we're going to use the scripture. We're going to use, again, what it really is, not what it's presenting itself as. Again, evil tries to hide itself. It's just trying to hide itself under the label of science, right? Let's start on 1 Corinthians 8, verse 1. Now, as touching things offered unto idols, we know that we all have knowledge. Knowledge puffeth up, but charity edifieth. To keep that in mind, knowledge puffeth up, but charity edifieth. Think about, again, the idea that now all of a sudden, thousands of years later, now they know more than the prophets. They know more than all the wise men because of some madman named Darwin who said he was living in a fantasy and a cold shudder runs down his spine, right? So I thought we'd look at the story of evolution. I'd explain to you what it is. And hopefully that'll reach you. So I'll give you a general overview that they believe in a quote, quote, big bang where everything is in is a tiny dot, a dot as small as the period on this page. That's how they believe everything was squished in. That should disprove it right there. They believe everything was in a tiny dot and then it expanded outward, right? In a big bang, right? And then the earth came formed not out of water, like the Bible says, not standing out of the water and in the water. No, it says out of fire and evolution total opposite and that the earth came far afterward right again already you see differences right and i want to point out romans chapter one let's go to romans chapter one again evolution is foretold he was foretold that there would be false so-called science it was foretold that they would deny the worldwide flood, right? The judgment. And we see here in Romans 1, let's start in verse 19. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath shown it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, 
and change the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshipped and served the creature more than the Creator who is blessed forever. Amen. So we see what are they worshipping? The creature, right? Instead of the Creator, they're worshipping the creature and they're trying to take His image and make it like in the beast. We're made in the image of God, my friends. We're made in the image of God. They're trying to take His image, right? And even corruptible man... They're trying to take God's image and say you were made, instead of a made in God's image, they're trying to say you're made in the image of a corruptible beast, right? Again, they go on and on there. So, they start with the Big Bang, and then they go into their blasphemy, the next blasphemy, which is abiogenesis. So if you don't know what that is, it literally means against Genesis, right? That's what the A negates it. They're against Genesis, right? They're blasphemers, right? So the idea is, we can look at uh, one of Darwin's quotes here. Let's go. You can look up, you know, primordial soup and all that. So first page Google results. Let's take a look here. So again... Let's do a Google search. Primordial soup, right? I believe it came from lightning. It's one of Darwin's quotes way back. The original spark of life may have begun in a warm little pond with all sorts of ammonia and phosphoric salts, lights, heat, electricity present, right? So again, lightning, right? And let's look at a more recent article, NBC News. Here we see NBC News, primordial lightning strikes helped life emerge on Earth, right? The emergence of the Earth's first living organisms may have been facilitated by a bolt out of the blue. Researchers said on Tuesday that lightning strikes during the first billion years, right, after the planet's formation, may have freed up phosphorus required for life and all this. And they go on. Here's a famous quote that they'll say you're quote mining, right, from an evolutionist. Evolution is promoted by its practitioners as more than mere science. Evolution is promulgated as an ideology, a secular religion, a full-fledged alternative to Christianity with meaning and morality. I am an ardent evolutionist, what he's saying. I'm not, I'm quoting him, Michael Roos. And he's an ex-Christian. But I must admit that this one complaint, right, the creation scientist is but one of many make the literis, literalists are absolutely right. Evolution is a religion. This was true of evolution in the beginning, and it is true of evolution still today. Right? Let's look at Isaiah 42, right? Old Testament. Right? Verse 8. I am the Lord, that is my name, and my glory will I not give to another Neither my praise to graven images. So, you, as a brethren, may not understand that evolution is a religion, but there are people who believe in it as a religion. They worship it. They worship the creature, as we have seen in Romans. Now, it doesn't matter if you think it's science. This man is admitting, him and others, worship evolution Worship it. It is their religion. Right? From the beginning of it, it was made to be a religion. Right? So keep that in mind. Again, keep that in mind for those of you who are claiming to be theistic evolutionists. They're claiming it's a religion, folks. So I'm going to go through what it really is right here, not using... All of the times they've disproven it because it's not science. It is religion. So we're going to look at it for what it is. So we've seen they believe that Big Bang, right, out of the heavens. Then they believe what? 
that lightning hit that primordial soup and the earth, then what? That first life form, get this. They named, get this, they named the first life form and their evolutionary model, right? What have they named it? Luca, right? Last universal common ancestor. But scientific names are always in the Latin or whatever, right? So again, if you look up on Google, Luca, one of the names, that, one of the meanings of the name comes up. What does it come up? Light bringer, right? You're not going to, again, can't make this stuff up, right? Let's look here. And we see Luca, also Latin, bringer of light, right? One of the ways to put it, right? Again, it could have chosen any name, right? It's got Isaiah 14. Hell from beneath is moved for thee to meet thee at thy coming. It stirreth up the dead for thee, even all the chief ones of the earth that have raised up from their thrones, all the kings of the nations, all they shall speak and say unto thee, Art thou also become weak as we? Art thou become like unto us? Thy pomp is brought down to the grave, and the noise of thy vows, the worm is spread under thee, and the worms cover thee. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which did weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation and the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell, to the sides of the pit. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble, that did shake kingdoms, that made the world as a wilderness and destroyed the cities thereof? That open not the house of his prisoners. Again, by the way, look at that verse. The house of his prisoners, right? Jesus Christ destroyed that prison house, remember? Beautiful. Mm. So, again, they didn't choose the name Luca by accident, folks. Again, the reason you have Latin names in science in the first place is because the church gave you science, right? The church, the Bible, is what gave you science as you know it. Yet they try and act like it's the opposite. Again, evolution has no place in science. So, they're forming up their false religion, right? Now, let's see. You've got Darwin, the false prophet. He has a theologian degree only. He's a prophet, a false prophet, right? He took two books with him on his voyage. He took, you know, the... Millions of Years Uniformitarianism book. And then he had the Bible. Which one did he choose to read? He rejected the Bible and chose to read lies. This is also symbolic of what you get, right? You know a tree by its fruits. Darwin chose the corruptible seed over the incorruptible seed, right? He then, just as foretold, right? The scoffers deny the worldwide flood. After he denied that flood, false prophet Darwin, right? He's a false prophet. That theologian brought forth his false religion of evolution, right? And he had his bishops and apostles like Ernst Haeckel to bring forth frauds and lies. Out of their mouth come lies, right? To push this on the people because he needs his... He needs his apostles to go forth and take his false religion, right? Then, again, they have their holy, quote-unquote, false scripture, the geologic column, right, that they worship, that they let some imagine millions of years. They won't let you destroy that, right, even though it's been refuted how many times. They have their false scripture, the geologic column. They have their false prophets, Darwin and Heckel and all this, right? Then they, what's next? Well, they have to build their idols like Pilt Down Man, Lucy, and all these things. Total frauds, right? One of them was literally a pig tooth, a Nebraska man. They said it was an ape man. They found a pig tooth. They drew up 
an idol of an ape man, right? Uh, Lucy, they find it with no feet. They smash the chimp pelvis, tried to reshape it, and then they drew on human feet. No feet were found, right? And then when they found it had a monkey foot, they said, well, it still walked like a human anyway, right? Again, it's total lies. They build up their idols. They have their false scriptures of Heckel's drawings and the geologic column and all this. And then their big one, just so you know it's religious, just so you know it's blasphemy, they bring out their false evolutionary tree of life. They use the name tree of life, like the Bible. Again, just so you know that it's blasphemy. Just so you know that it's a religion. So... They draw a bunch of creatures, connect them with lines, but the lines have nothing there. It's empty. Again, we've already covered all their transitions they predicted to find are missing, right? It's supposed to be numberless transitions. So it's just a bunch of drawings, scribbles, and they say this is their false tree of life, right? And on and on it goes. I think most of us get that. And Ken Hovind does a great seminar on the dangers of evolution their morals and things. I want to take a quick look at that before we get to the main part of this here. Chapter 4, Proverbs 4, Old Testament. Let's look at Proverbs 4. Enter not into the path of the wicked, and go not. Uh, look at verse 14. And go not in the way of evil men. Avoid it. Pass not by it. Turn from it and pass away. For they sleep not, except they have done mischief. And their sleep is taken away unless they cause some to fall. Notice that, to fall. For they eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. But the path of the just is as the shining light that shineth more and more into the perfect day. The way of the wicked is as darkness. They know not at what they stumble. My son, attend to my words and climb thine ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart, for they are life unto those that find them in health to all their flesh. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Put away from thee a froward mouth and perverse lips put far from thee. Let thine eyes look right on, and let thine eyelids look straight before thee. Ponder the path of thy feet, and let all thy ways be established. Mmm. Powerful. Notice, they cannot sleep unless they have done mischief, unless they cause some to fall. And what is their bread? Their bread is wickedness. And what is their wine? Violence. Right? So again, what are the morals of this evolution religion? Again, Ken Hovind covers it good, but I'm going to point out one other. Because it is scientifically. It's not just, oh, they were inspired by evolution. No, it's scientifically instilled into evolution. Their false science, their false religion. I want to take a clip of a little book here. Let's take a look at it. All right, this is from that evolutionary book, right? 20 Blunders. It talks about evolutionary psychology, right? Again, part of it. Where they push, there's no free will, right? Evolutionist William Provine, the late Cornell professor, author of the essay, No Free Will, right? Look what he quotes. Nor can we reasonably expect people to behave morally by exercising free will, he says, because free will simply doesn't exist. Genetics and environmental factors do not merely influence our moral decisions, they determine them. Free will, he argues, is not simply a myth. It is a destructive myth. One of the meanest, nastiest, most divisive ideas we've developed in our cultural history. We use it, he says, to blame people for their actions and to justify mistreating people. In other words, criminals, murderers, rapists. In other words, evil people. What's he, what's he saying? He doesn't want judgment, right? He wants to say he's an animal. Whatever he does is fine. There is no judgment. That's evolutionary's morals. But let's continue to the next page here. You're not even going to believe this. And keep in mind, this is under their so-called quote-unquote science. This is not saying 
that oh they were influenced by evolution which some were this is the evolutionists themselves evolutionary psychology right they tried to use it to explain what bullying and quote unquote yep as horrible as it is they tried to use it for explaining rape right in 2000 MIT press MIT press published a natural history of rape biological bases of sexual coercion right that had a bunch of backlash right because it says there's no free will right it's simply gonna happen right again they're trying to justify what all manner of evil with evolution yeah i'm quoting here 20 evolutionary blunders just a brief excerpt here but uh, you're not even going to believe this quote, right? Again, this is the evolutionary morals, part of their religion. Look what the re evolutionist reporter is saying. Writer Sharon Begley. And that is why we carry rape genes today. The family trees of prehistoric men lacking rape genes petered out, report science writer Sharon Begley. Mm. Again. I suggest you go buy that book. I give it 8 or 9 out of 10 just for the price. It's got some interesting stuff in there. 20 evolutionary blunders. Notice what it said. Rape genes. This is how they justify all their manner of evil. It's through evolution, right? What have you heard this before? Rape genes. So you're saying they were born a rapist? Just like you were born a sodomite? The Bible doesn't teach that. The Bible teaches free will. Again, you see the evil of this religion, but I'm not done because we're getting to the main point, right? So let's continue. Let's go to Hebrews 2, New Testament, famous chapter. Again, recommend you commit it all to memory here. This chapter especially, I love it. I love all of it, but oh, I co oh this one's good. For as much, uh, verse 14, for as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood. He also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is, the devil, and deliver them, who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. For verily he took not on him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. Wherefore in all things it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest, and things pertaining to God, to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. For in that he himself has suffered being tempted, he is able to succor them that are tempted. Mm. Powerful. Jesus Christ defeated the devil in death. But notice the devil, right, came to have the power of death, right? And Jesus Christ defeated him in death. So, we see we've been falling wrong. There's that big bang, the primordial soup. Then, quote-unquote, Luca... Named after what? Named after the light bringer named Lucifer, right? By the way, the new Bible versions will take out the name Lucifer. They're taking that name out of the wicked one. I wonder why. To deceive, friends. To deceive. And even Bible CA website that attacks King James. Well, for some reason, they had nicknamed the devil that for all these years. For some reason, it's not supposed to be there. No, it's there in the Bible, they're just liars. They're wrong, right? Again, we know that he's going to come. It's going to be the name or the number of his name. Why are they trying to take out names of the wicked one out of the Bible? Trying to deceive. But then what happens, right? So we see an evolution. Then after that, Luca, then what? All the different species have to come through what? Death, right? Because as he said, the other genes have to die. They have to be taken out. So all the diversity of life has to come through death, right? See how it's a false religion? And then finally, we get to the transhumanism, right? Which is not the main point I want to make. But then they get even further where they're going to evolve, right? To be like gods or like the most high, right? Literally the first lie of the serpent. That's what evolution is. Let's take a look here at an evolutionist. Yeah, and hear the evolutionists, you know, own words. And so we're actually moving exponentially to have greater uh, levels of the very properties we ascribe to God without limit. 
Now, we never become literally infinite, but we're moving exponentially in that direction. So we become more godlike uh, and we become closer to God and, uh, and we do so at an exponential rate and exponentials kind of explode, never quite becoming infinite. So we never really reach that ideal, but you can definitely say that evolution is a spiritual process that moves us closer to God. So I don't know if that answers so you heard what he said. That was uh, evolutionist Ray Kurzweil. And that was not the one I wanted to find. It was an even more obvious one that's been, who knows, I can't find it anymore. Who knows if it's been deleted. Or they just say, yes, they're going to become God. And if you don't like it, they'll say, get off the planet. You're not going to stop them, right? Again, blasphemy, right? And of course, they'll fail, but they can actually hurt people in their attempts, right? We see Genesis chapter 3. And the serpent said unto the woman, You shall not surely die, for God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil, right? Again, that wicked serpent lied, right? And God told him, and I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Again, Jesus Christ cursed that wicked serpent. Again, the lie is the same, just repackaged for evolution, right? And they say they're going to become like the Most High, right? We've seen their morals. They have a false tree of life, the false prophets, the false uh, idols, and that through the power of death, they believe, right, that all this is coming out. And finally, with transhumanism, right, they even say they're going to be like God. And guess what? They're going to have to change their body. So they're totally going to deny their image that's made in the image of God, they're totally going to deny God as the final step of evolution, right? Total embrasure of the lie. They're going to take that mark of the beast, right? If they think it's going to change them, right? And what's interesting is you talk to some of these uh, people, right? There was a video on YouTube a while back where one of the scholars, you know, left, quote unquote, left Christianity, but we see, again, he was never a believer from the parable of the sower. Now, that seed didn't get in his heart. Instead, he was probably like that one on the wayside where this, the wicked one stole the seed away before he could understand it, right? Or perhaps he merely had a hardened heart. Who knows? But we see that they said, well, what if, right? This was one of the evolutionists in the comments. What if, you know, we've believed in materialism or whatever, and then they come and say that you have to take a mark to buy and sell. What are we going to do, right? And the evolution is like, so what? I'll take it. The Bible's not real, right? Even if it comes to pass, which it will, he said he's going to take the mark. He doesn't care, right? Again, this is how deceived they are, folks. Total deception. Now, let's tie it together here. Let's go to Revelation real quick. Let's go to Revelation chapter 9. Consider it a paraphrase. It's just a paraphrase. Read the whole book for yourself. Read it all for yourself. All right. Revelation 9. And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven into the earth. And to him was given the key to the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit, as the smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. Right. There came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth. And to them, given power as the scorpions of the earth have power, right? And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads, right? Again, read it off yourself, but I, I just wanted to use that for the imagery that we see of the pit and the smoke coming out, right? I could have used another verse for the pit there, I guess, but wanted to point out the pit. We're going to tie the evolution religion together here. So I want you to go. Keep everything we've got in mind, right? We're going to go to Luke. Everything the evolution religion teaches. We're going to be like the Most High. Their morals, right? Violence. Wickedness, right? And they teach there's no free will. And remember what that guy said, right? There's no free will. And that nothing affects what you do, right? You have no free will. Then explain how the Bible can change people. 
again, they say there's no free will. Why are they so desperate to keep the Bible out of people's hands, specifically the King James Bible as well? Why are they so desperate? When people read this book, right, God's Word, they call upon that name, Jesus Christ, and are saved, and it changes people, right? They say there's no free will, then why are they so scared of people reading this book, friends? Again, he said, not, you're not influenced by it. He said, free will doesn't exist. That's what the evolutionists teach. Then why are they so scared of this book? Why are they doing everything they can to keep this book out of schools? And take the King James Bible out of your hands. Have you noticed that? The most attacked Bible on the face of the earth is the King James Bible. Even other brethren are trying to take this book out of your hands. That makes no sense, right? If they really believed all the translations were fine, why are they so desperate to take this book out of your hands, folks. And they're not trying to take the book out of your hands. They're trying to pluck you out of the Father's hand. Not going to happen. No man plucketh me from a Father's hand. So, let's summarize a little bit. The evolution religion, we're going to tie it together. First, you got that Big Bang. Right? The earth out of fire, not water. Right? You got that soup. Coming up comes Luca. And you've got, through death, millions of years of death and suffering, you get all these people that are what? They're becoming more like, like according, evolving more and more godlike, according to evolutionists, right? And their prophet Darwin, their false scriptures, the geologic column, Heckel's drawings and all that. And then they make their idols, all the false missing links, like Lucy and Piltdown Man and Nebraska Man. And then finally, they get you to deny the image of God totally with transhumanism right? Claiming you're going to be like God, right? We're going to tie it together, right? Because they've even said they're waiting for, quote unquote, their false alien Messiah, right? Their false God, their alien to come, the evolutionists, some of them are waiting for the alien to come, who, quote unquote, seeded life here, right? So their, quote unquote, father of evolution. We're going to tie it together with this verse. This verse ties it all together. Remember what we read about the primordial soup, Remember what we read about Darwin, right? He said that warm pond, right? The lightning hit that pond. So this is going to connect it all together for us. Let's look at Luke chapter 10, New Testament. This will tie it all together. The evolution religion revealed. Here it is. Abiogenesis is blasphemy. The brethren should not believe it. Let's take a look right here. Verse 18. Uh, verse 17, And the seventy returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you, notwithstanding in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Mm powerful again what do the evolutionists worship right what hit that pond what did they say hit the pond lightning their religion the big bang in other words big bang another way to say it what cast out of the heavens cast out of the heavens onto the fiery earth right Again, the smoke of that pit coming up, right? What happens? Lightning hits it, right? Out of that pit comes what? Luca, a.k.a. Lightbringer, a.k.a. Lucifer, comes out of the pit. And through, quote-unquote, the power of death instead of life, evolution has their false tree of life, right? Which is really the tree of death. Then... You've got your false prophet Darwin and his apostles preaching their false scriptures of the geologic column that doesn't exist, the false heckles embryos that don't exist. Then what? The prophets have their false idols, the Nebraska man, the Piltdown man, all of these false idols, Lucy with her drawn on feet so that you can worship the creature as the Bible foretold. And then, right... Then their evolutionary morals are rape, murder, kill, destroy, evolutionary psychology, again, of the devil. I do what I have seen with my father. You do what you have seen with your father. Then 
the last step, the ultimate step, they think they're going to be like the most high, first lie of the serpent. What are they going to do? They're going to have to deny the image of God they're made in totally and become a robot or whatever. They're going to have to totally deny God. In other words, they're going to have to take that mark and then they'll be damned forever. Right? This is the evolution religion. Lightning hit that pond, right? Lightning fell upon the evolutionists. They believe it came from that lightning, right? That fell onto the earth. They believe, right? The evolutionist false god is the devil. Lucifer, Luca, however you want to pronounce it, right? If you want to say Lucifer, the alien planted Luca, however you want to do it. Doesn't matter. That lightning hit that pit. And they say it started, right, through death. Totally the opposite of the Bible, right? He will not share his glory with another. Jesus Christ defeated that wicked serpent. Jesus Christ has given you power over the enemy in his name. Why are you whoring after other gods? Let's fit. Look. Knowledge puffeth up, but charity edifieth, right? So the fake wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. But Solomon had real wisdom that God gave him. Let's look at 1 Kings. 1 Kings chapter 11, Old Testament. But King Solomon loved many strange women, together with the daughter of Pharaoh, women of the Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Zidonians, Zidonians, and Hittites, of the nations concerning which the Lord said unto the children of Israel, You shall not go into them, neither shall they come in unto you, for surely they will turn away your heart. After their gods, Solomon came unto these in love, and he had 700 wives, princesses, and 300 concubines, and his wives turned away his heart. For it came to pass when Solomon was old, that his wives turned away his heart after other gods, and his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God, as with the heart of David his father. For Solomon went after Ashtoreth the goddess of the Zodonians, and after Milcom, the abomination of the Ammonites, and Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord, and went not fully after the Lord, as did David his father. Then did Solomon build a high place for Chemosh, the abomination of Moab, and the hill that is before Jerusalem, and for Molech, the abomination of the children of Ammon, and likewise did he, for all his strange wives, which burnt incense and sacrificed unto their gods, and the Lord was angry with Solomon, because his heart was turned away from the Lord God of Israel, which had appeared unto him twice, and had commanded him concerning this thing, that he should not go after other gods, but he kept not that which the Lord commanded. Wherefore, the Lord said unto Solomon, For as much as this is done of thee, and thou hast not kept my covenant, and my statutes which I have commanded thee, I will surely rend the kingdom from thee, and will give it to thy servant, Notwithstanding in thy days, I will not do it for David, thy father's sake, but I will rend it out of the hand of thy son. Mm. Here we see Solomon, the wisest man. Most people don't consider themselves wiser than Solomon, do they? I should hope not. And yet even he, with all his wisdom, was deceived into whoring after other gods. So this idea that you can mix a little of that evolution religion in... And that everything's going to be fine. And that God's not going to chasten you. If you're not being chastened, the Bible says you're bastards and not sons. You cannot mix this pagan evolution religion in with Christianity. It cannot happen, my friends. Stop whoring after other gods. God will not share his glory with another. That false lightning did not create you. Abiogenesis is blasphemy against Genesis. God breathes life into you, and God saves you, gives you a new heart and a new spirit, takes away a heart of stone, and gives you a heart of flesh, and seals you into the day of redemption, plants that incorruptible seed in you, and will raise you up. The Lord Jesus Christ will raise you up. Amen. Stop whoring after Darwin. Stop being Darwin's whore. Stop being Heckel's whore. Stop whoring after Luca. Stop whoring after the abomination of abiogenesis. Stop it. And stop humoring it. Ken Hovind says, well, if they make life in a laboratory, it'll prove that intelligence may... No, it's not going to happen. Stop humoring it. It's blasphemy. It will not happen. You understand? All these abiogenesis experiments, 
They're trying to create life. They're trying to be like God. They're blaspheming, which each one, it's blasphemy. Stop humoring them. Stop being Darwin's whore. Stop whoring after other gods, as Solomon did. He was wiser than you, right? And he could do it. You think you couldn't do it? No. Knowledge puffeth up, but charity edifieth. Study the word of God. Open rebuke is better than a secret love. I can say in secret I love you. Or I can rebuke you openly because I love you. I want you to get saved if you're not saved. And stop mixing this false religion in with your Christianity. Again, didn't have to use all these different ways they disproved it. All I had to do was show you who they're worshiping. Stop it. Stop whoring after Darwin and his false god, Luca, Lucifer. I reject Lucifer in the name of Jesus Christ. I reject all the false gods in the name of Jesus Christ. And all the false promises in the name of Jesus Christ. Get thee hence, Satan, in the name of Jesus Christ. And you should feel the same. Whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. He is merciful and will forgive you and pardon you all iniquity. I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I pray that you come to the knowledge of the truth and that you stop whoring after other gods if you are. Stop trying to mix paganism and God will not share his glory with another. God bless you and keep you and guide you in Jesus Christ's almighty precious name. Amen.